Hi, I'm Jake from Northside Custom Crafts. We're going to do a shop tour today. This is Aaron. He's going to be the cameraman. So if it's messed up, leave comments for him. Here we go. Here's the outside of it. It's a 40 by 50 insulated shop. We built it to build race cars in. Then I started work working. So I'm going to show you a few pictures of the race cars as we make our way back into the shop. So that's what it used to look like. So when you first walk in the door now, we have our sheet goods storage and I need to come up with something different for it, but this is what we have right now. It's just pretty much a piece of wood laying on the floor and we lean it up against the wall. So that's what we have. Now moving along this side of the wall, we have our Grizzly 17 inch bandsaw and I liked it so much, we got two of them. So now when I first started doing woodworking, we were doing a bunch of shapes and I was doing a lot of work on the bandsaw. So things have kind of changed as you grow and as you do different things, your needs kind of change. So I'm not really sure if I need two bandsaws now or not, but it, when I do need it, it's pretty convenient. And so moving on is we got our joiner and planer table here with dust collection coming from the wall and it all works pretty good and it, it suits our knees right now and we have these uh, two by four basic tables and they're good if you need a bunch of workbenches right now and they're easy to build and they're sturdy and all that stuff but the problem is they're all open and dirt gets in there and when I'm finished with the tool I just put it I just put it right there and nothing really seems to have its place and that's going to be the common theme through this whole thing is this year we need to organize and that's part of the reason why we're doing this shop tour. Okay, now we're going to the to our table saw here. It's the Grizzly hybrid table saw and it was a big step up from our Craftsman table saw. I couldn't make cut straight cuts and it was it was sketchy at best. So this one is a pretty good table saw compared to that one. And then I went ahead and put the, the sliding attachment on it. And so far, I'm not really a big fan. Every time you move the miter fence, you have to re-square it. In which that's not that big a deal, but the other thing is it can only go back so far. And when you go to cut longer things, and if it's worth more than that long, you have to remove it and then you have to resquare it. It's in the way, it's not level. So at this point in time, I'm thinking it's more of a hindrance than it is a help. So something's gonna have to get figured out on this. But people have asked for a review and I'll probably do a review sometime. But as of right now, it helps me when I'm doing bigger sheet goods, but any other time it's kind of in the way. So there's a little mini review on it. Okay, coming back around, we have some more of these tables, which here we go again. If you can see the mess under here, we do the glue ups on here and we do, and we do a bunch of work up here and our tools just, they just get thrown right there. All of our finishing stuff is down there and glue and pin nailers. And, and once again, nothing really has its own home. So that's gonna be the big improvement this year is, is a shop organization. Here's a couple cedar chests we made. We're gonna sell one and we're gonna raffle one off at, at the Make-A-Wish Car Show. And the Make-A-Wish Car Show is something that we do every year. We love to do it. We like the people there. We like the cause. And uh, that's our charity we do every year. We're able to to make some kid happy. So one of these is gonna grant a wish for some kid and that's what we wanna do. Okay. 
We have our second 17 inch bandsaw. It's the exact same model as the first one. We do the curves with this one and we do the straight lines with the other one. Once again, I don't know if one of these is gonna stay or go, but we'll decide that here in the near future. And my clamp racks, the racks themselves are, are from Grizzly. And the bottom thing I have on the wheels is the original roll around casters for the dust collection system. So all I did was put these together and welded them to that cart. And, and here they are. Now I can move these to the work instead of walking all around the shop to get these because, you know, 20 feet for each clamp is kind of a long walk when, when you can just take all these to where you're working. Next thing we have here is a Supermax 1938 drum sander. It's amazing. This thing is awesome. And um, it's pretty pricey, but the convenience of it is, is worth the price. And it's, this is a, a heavy duty made machine right here. And I'd recommend it to anybody. So there you go. The dust collection is a two horsepower Grizzly model. And that has the super dust deputy and it has the dust entry to tell you when the when the barrel's full which i really recommend that because if you miss it you destroy the shop so that's one thing i do recommend and the the cyclone works good and it keeps the shop clean and it keeps my lungs clean and um and, the, and it's a really good system so i have my battery chargers over here for my for my power, my uh, this is the first things that, that uh, Dina and I bought for each other when we first decided we were going to do this was a bunch of cordless tools from Sears, and they've all worked just fine. And that's how we charge the batteries. And coming along to this rigid uh, belt sander and orbital sander combo, this is one of those tools where I'm watching videos and and everybody has them, so. I was like, it has to be pretty cool. So I bought it and it is cool. And I don't regret buying it at all. It is, it does a pretty good job on everything. And the next thing up is our, our downdraft table, our sanding table. And uh, I have dust collection coming over here that'll plug up to the sander. Let's hook it up like that. And then uh, the downdraft table works. This is a really big surface area for this to work. So if you're working on something small, I cut all these off cuts so you can adjust the size of the table. And I cut a bunch of them. So you pretty much have whatever size of a downdraft table you want. And it works really well. So when you have your routing things up here and you get a bunch of chips, then you just lift that up and I have a groove cut back there and all the suction to go back through there and you just blow it down there and it, work, and it works really well. And once again, if you wanna look at the mess down there, everything just gets thrown wherever it lands and, and uh, that needs to get fixed. Now the shop air, the shop air runs from the other shop and comes over here and plugs in and we did a video on running this line and and uh, have an airline all over the shop. It's pretty convenient. And the, the compressor's over in the other shops. So I don't have to listen to it. And, it, and it's pretty good. Coming along to the miter saw station, we have the dust collection comes over to a four inch port, and I have a two and a half inch port, and one goes to the saw itself, and the other one goes to a downdraft table I made. Now the problem with it is if you have both of them open, both of them lose suction from one another and it doesn't work that well. So, so I'm gonna do the shop back thing with the Cyclone and so I'll be able to run the downdraft table and the miter saw at the same time and uh, we won't lose suction from each other and it'll, it'll work a lot better. And once again, if you wanna look at the, where everything just gets thrown under here and this, is the, gonna be the next big thing after we do make Wish Car Show. This is gonna be the big improvement for next year.
Okay. Moving along. The scroll saw is one of the first machines I bought whenever we figured out we were going to start doing woodworking instead of drag racing. And I made a lot of cool stuff with that and made a lot of people happy and, and uh, made a lot of really unique things. But now that we got the CNC machine, this one's kind of just collecting dust. If I need to cut something real fast, I do it. And I'll probably never get rid of it since that was the first thing we bought. And uh, here's a couple of the little prototype things we're making for Make-A-Wish. And uh, the next couple weeks we're gonna be doing a whole lot of this and probably get some special orders out of it. And here's a drill press. I don't really know what to say about a drill press. It drills holes. So here's, <laughs> we went to Sears and got a drill press and uh, it drills holes and it does, it does a fine job. It does it straight. There's not a lot of run out. So there's this. And now probably the biggest expense, but probably the coolest expense we've had is the Laguna IQ CNC machine. And we're just scratching the surface with this, learning how to use the software and, and knowing what materials we can use and, and, and uh, all of the things that go along with it but it's super cool and i don't regret buying it one bit and i think by the by the end of it this is gonna this is gonna make the funds back that will pay for the whole shop so uh, this thing is really cool and then moving along over here so here's the crate that the cnc machine came in i thought it looked cool so we're using it as a table and so I store the bits and the little toolbox that came with the CNC machine and I keep all the camera equipment, all the video making equipment I keep up here and seeing how the dust collection on the CNC machine works really well. It doesn't really get dirty over here so that's a good place to keep the camera equipment. Okay, here in this corner this is our whole craft show display and it fits in this corner and we've built these display racks and we've done all this so it'll fit in one truckload when we go so we can have a 20-foot booth full of products with one truckload and that fits all in this corner and that's where we store it so here's the lumber rack I got it from Grizzly it holds lumber I don't know what else to say about it so there's lumber rack and above that is the heat and air unit it's a mini split it's a Pioneer 24,000 BTU unit it's a little bit small for this shop, but I already had it and they're expensive, so I didn't want to waste it. In the summer, it does a really good job of cooling this place off, at least taking the heat off so you can work in here. In the summer, I'm, in the winter, they're not that great. Once the air gets too cold outside, it won't heat the shop. So I need to figure out something else on that, but otherwise it's a really good air conditioner. There's a toolbox with all the mechanic tools in there the ones that I, I might still have to work on something as a mechanic so all this stuff will get me by and um, here it is moving along you still have engine stand engine hoist and then we come to our little metal working area over here where you got your Eastwood welder over here MIG 135 and it came with the the plasma cutter too and I think that's a real popular thing that they have going on because it's affordable and you can get into this stuff relatively cheaply for for what it is and um, I don't have a complaint out of either one of them the the plasma cutter cut stuff and this welds it so um, I'm not a professional at it but it it'll put two pieces of metal together and it doesn't look bad so that's that and here's the the benches and and the chop saw and all that stuff it's a mess so but it gets the job done moving around over here we use these tables we have all these work benches or carts or whatever we just cover in plastic and that's how we paint by the door and just so you know how much wood gets used 
when you're making cedar chests. This is this is the what's from the joiner and planer from three cedar chests. So just to get an idea about the importance of dust collection and the, the importance of keeping your shop clean and all that stuff, this will give you an idea of what the mess would look like if we didn't have any of that stuff. So we're gonna take a look at the floor. And this floor is, the products you get are from you coat it. And it's a water-based first coat and it becomes one with the, with the cement and then uh, there's a process you go through it's really not that expensive for what you get it has a lifetime warranty and um, it's easy to clean your shop so this is our 2017 shop tour i cleaned the shop but i didn't organize it so that you could see how unorganized it is and then next year when i do another one we can see what the difference is and then we can see if it's worth doing all that stuff. If this is one of your first time watching our videos, then do us a favor and go ahead and subscribe so you can see our next videos. We have a lot coming up and um, we'll see you next time. You did, didn't you? So that was a shot before. <laughs> no cussing. No cussing. Don't be all like, dude, I'm too cool to do video with my stepdad because I'm awesome and huh you see me just go I'm gonna go turn it on you can turn off the camera for a second I'm gonna feed the bird some cedar. Yeah, I'm ready. I don't go around beating up midgets. <laughs>